Hello, my name is Captain Chris Burrows and I am Scarborough Borough Council's Borough Harbour Master with responsibility for the harbours at Whitby and Scarborough and also finally Cobble Landing. Today I'm going to give you a brief insight into the a day in the life of our team at uh, Whitby Harbour and I'm going to discuss briefly who I am firstly, um, what Whitby Harbour actually is because it's generally far more than what people see on first sight, what our team does and what we're responsible for and then I'm going to give you a look ahead at some of the exciting things that are coming to our uh, to our harbour at Whitby um, in the next few years. So who am I then? Well, as I said, my name's Chris Burrows. Um, I'm firstly a husband and a father to a family of, of six children. Um, I went to sea when I was 16 years old um, and I went with the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. So I went to college at uh, South Tyneside Nautical College and then I did my sea time and, and served my time as a cadet with the Royal Fleet Auxiliary. Um, once I qualified with the, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary and I did a few years service with them, um, I then went off um, to the North Sea and worked on oil and gas supply vessels before moving on to, to working on the same types of vessels internationally, um, both in the, the Far East and off the West Coast of Africa. Um, I worked my way up, uh, gained my Master Mariner's qualification um, and served as a captain on board those vessels. In 2016, I, I came ashore um, and I, I picked up the, the job as the Deputy Harbour Master for Scarborough Borough Council um, and recently I've been promoted to, to Borough Harbour Master. Along with my, um, with my working life, um, I'm also an RNLI volunteer and a community safety officer for Finding Lifeboat Station and I'm a career as a sea ambassador as well. So I work with, with generally young people to open their eyes to, to the opportunities and careers that exist in the maritime sector um, and at, at sea generally. So what is Whitby Harbour? Now, to most people, this will, this will appear to be a very strange question. Uh, because what most people see is that Whitby Harbour um, is, is the beautiful uh, scenery and the boats that they see whenever they visit Whitby. But in actual fact, Whitby Harbour is far more. And the definition of Whitby Harbour um, comes from the Whitby Port and Harbour Act of 1879. And that act says that the port of Whitby shall, for all purposes of this and the recited act, or any act relating to the harbour of Whitby, extend over and along the seashore for a distance of one mile and a half westward, one mile eastward from the existing lighthouse on the northern extremity of the West Pier of the Harbour, and to a distance of two miles seaward from and coextensive with that portion of the seashore, and shall include all places where the sea flows and reflows within those limits, and all the lands, buildings, works within or near to those limits from time to time vested in or belonging to or under the control of the trustees. Now, since the act was originally written, a lot has changed, um, but those limits remain exactly the same. The main thing that's changed in there is the reference to trustees. And in modern language, that relates to Scarborough Borough Council um, as the Harbour Authority. Now, notice the date on the act there, 1879. And a lot of the legislation that we work under within harbours is all very ancient uh, legislation it is written in, um, in not easy to read language, um, certainly not modern language. And a lot of it has not been redrafted since it, since it was originally done. And the Whitby Port and Harbour Act is a good example of that, um, been over 200 years old. Now, that area described in the Act is a huge area and far more than what most people would consider. So that gives us a total area of over 1,100 acres or 1.8 square miles of area to, to under our responsibility. Now, 1,130 of that um, is wet area, is, is, is water, uh, and another 18.4 acres of that is dry land. Now, of those 1,100 acres that are wet, um, just over 1,000 1, of them are actually at sea. Now, what that means is that our limits extend from two miles beyond the north of the of the Whitby Piers, right the way to four kilometres inland, right the way up to uh, Russell Weir. Now, we know that these limits have never changed because the, the weir at Russell was built for the old mill, and that mill was built, and well, along with the weir, before the Harbours Act came into force. So we know that throughout the, throughout certainly that period since the Act came into force, that our limits have remained exactly the same. And of course, that gives us a huge area of responsibility, both from what we can see within the town of Whitby 
um, right the way inland and then right the way two miles out to sea as well. Within those areas, we have 830 metres of wharves and quays to look after, plus hundreds of metres of pontoon. And that, for, for a small team, that gives us an awful lot of land and water to look after um, in what is essentially a very busy harbour. But of course, it's not all about infrastructure and, and people are arguably our strongest asset within harbours. So our team is made up of three harbour masters, two office staff, five local port services watch keepers who work around the clock, one marina attendant and an, ad an additional marina attendant during the summer season, one harbour joiner who acts as team leader, two harbour operatives, three bridge operatives who operate Whitby Swing Bridge, and then the rest of our community, which is made up of over 400 vessel owners, 13,000 local residents approximately, and then the 1.4 million visitors to the region um, who all make use um, of Whitby Harbour and its beautiful scenery. So what do these people actually do? Well, I'll start at the top of the list. So three harbour masters. Mm -hmm. So there are my, myself and two deputies, and our responsibility is to oversee and manage the day-to-day -day running of each of our ports. So what we do is we divide ourselves between, uh, between the areas under our control. So mainly Whitby and Scarborough, and then visiting finally when, when needed. Um, and we will divide ourselves up during the week so that that harbour master during normal times um, is on duty at each port on a daily basis. Now, this has continued throughout the pandemic. What we have done is we've reduced so that we, we are down um, in accordance with government guidance. We are working from home as much as possible, but there is always a harbour master on duty um, within the borough. So there's either somebody at the Whitby office or somebody at the Scarborough office. And today I'm at the Scarborough office, um, keeping an eye on things here. But even whilst we're working from home during these times, we're on call and we're available to come out immediately um, if our team on the ground require it. So supporting us in the office uh, at Whitby are two, um, two office ladies and they, they take care of all the daily administration and they keep us in check. On the ground during the, during the normal course of activities and on a 24 hour basis, are our local port services watchkeepers. Now, these are what we used to refer to as, as port control uh, watchkeepers. They've also been referred to as peermen um, and various other things over, over the years. Now, recently we changed their title to local port services, and this is to reflect a change in legislation that's coming in in the next few years. And it differentiates the service that we offer um, to what a large port uh, such as Teesport might offer um, and they would refer to their service as a vessel traffic service, as opposed to a local port service. The, the difference here is that a vessel traffic service will actually direct vessels to go to, to a particular um, place or to alter their course. With a local port service, we won't uh, physically direct vessels, um, but what we will do is we will, we will offer them advice. So if a vessel is running into danger and um, heading towards a hazard, we will advise the master of that vessel that he may well want to alter his course because there is a hazard in front of him. If he's going into shallow water, again, we will offer the advice that he may well want to change his direction of travel to avoid wherever that hazard is. But the liability is left with the master of that vessel to actually make the decision as to which course of action he wants to take. So that's the difference between the service we offer um, and what a large port would offer with a VTS. Now, Offering a local port service um, for the size of our port is rather unusual around the coast. Um, and we stand out as a centre of excellence um, within our harbours for actually offering this service. A lot of other ports um, of our size would offer it, um, a, a daylight service only. So once you get to five o'clock in the evening, um, there is no advice available to people um, until the following morning. So we were highlighted um, as, a, as an area of be pra best practice by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency a few years ago, and that best practice was shared um, with our neighbouring ports uh, throughout the coast of the UK. So the next on the list is our marina attendants. Now, our marina attendants are the first face, that's, uh, first face that somebody sees when they, when they visit Whitby um, on their vessel. So they will greet the vessel, they will take their lines, uh, make sure they're tied up securely and safely, and then they will point out um, the facilities that are available to them, how they can get to the local town where they'll find a local shop or get them set up with water and electricity and any other services that they require. 
So they are essentially the face of Whitby um, for people arriving from the sea um, from a ledger point of view. Our harbour joiner um, is, is absolutely instrumental to maintaining uh, the maintenance of our harbours. So um, within our harbours, we have an awful lot of infrastructure, as I said before, um, with those many hundred metres of, of pontoons and wharfs and quays. And we will try and do as much maintenance as we can in-house with our own team before we bring co uh, contractors in. And our, our harbour joiner is responsible for coordinating that maintenance and the, any repairs required. So you can often, often see him uh, working on large, uh, large timber piles, um, laying cement down to, to make repairs to areas, um, dangling on a, on a safety harness off the edge of a wharf to, to get to something to repair, um, and generally coordinating the teams that are available to him to, to keep our harbours maintained. Now, working on a day-to-day -day basis with the harbour joiner um, are two harbour operatives, um, and these guys uh, work, work with the joiner to actually conduct the maintenance. And the, the local port services watch keepers as well will assist with the maintenance so that, uh, so that we can keep on top of things. Now, anybody who's visited uh, Whitby um, will have come across uh, Whitby Swingbridge and therefore will have come across our three harbour operatives. Um, uh, sorry, our three uh, bridge operatives. So our bridge operatives uh, operate at uh, Whitby Swingbridge and the bridge operates from two hours before high water to two hours after high water on the hour and half, uh, half past the hour whenever there is demand for the bridge. So we are well aware that every time we open the bridge, uh, we bring Whitby to a standstill, particularly during the busy summer months. So we, we will not open the bridge unless it is required for a vessel uh, to, to transit. Now, it's worth pointing out that river traffic has precedence over road traffic. And the reason for that is very simple, that the river has been there a lot, lot longer than what the road has. And of course, the bridge completely isolates the, the upper harbour. So it is essential that we do open it to let traffic uh, flow freely, um, both in the, from the upper to the lower harbour and vice versa. So our operatives will, will clear the bridge, they will close the gates and ring the bells, and then they will operate the bridge um, as quickly as possible. If we only have small traffic coming through, we will only open one side of the bridge because that then saves us time to get it closed again. Obviously, with bigger vessels, we need both sides open so that, uh, so that they can safely transit. That, that's our, our team within Harbours. Um, so a fairly small team um, looking after a, a vast area. But of course, as I said before, um, part of the team are, are our users as well. So the 400 vessel owners that I mentioned are, is, are a split between about 40 um, local fishing vessels, just under, um, and then the rest are made up of leisure vessels. Um, each of these types of, of, uh, of owners have their own requirements, their own demands and their own services that they that they need to make their visits uh, work well. So we, we tend as much as possible to, to give these people and these vessels uh, the services that they require. So commercial vessels are generally uh, confined to, to one sort of particular areas of the harbour and the leisure vessels are, are contained to others. Um, sometimes they will mix, but they do tend to stick to their own areas because that's the way the services work best. And of course, our, our other, uh, our next uh, main user are the local residents of Whitby. Um, you can't go anywhere in Whitby without seeing the harbour. Um, the people regularly need to, to cross from one side of the town to the other, and that invo involves going right through the middle of the harbour. So local residents are absolutely essential to, to what we offer. Now, as I keep saying, we have a, an exceptionally large area to cover, but with a very small team. And that's why it's important um, that, that local residents, when they see something wrong in the harbour, um, please let us know. We, our staff can't be everywhere at once, and we do rely on people pointing things out to us that we maybe haven't, uh, maybe haven't seen or maybe picked up on. Um, so those reports um, are really important to us, and it allows us to attend to things um, as rapidly as possible. And then finally, we've got the, the 1.4 million uh, visitors to the borough, um, a lot of whom will, will visit Whitby during their time here. Um, and we want them to come, we want them to enjoy the town, enjoy the harbour um, in a safe manner that, uh, that, that protects them, makes sure they, they have a good time uh, and ultimately uh, looks after the, the local economy and the local community. So what does our team actually do? Well, I've been through the list of, of different roles that we have within uh, within Whitby Harbour, um, and it can be broken down into into a few uh, broad areas that we look after. 
So vessel traffic management. This falls to the local port services uh, uh, watch keepers, um, and they will they will direct vessels entering the harbour to the the particular area or berth uh, that they need to head to. They will greet them. They will offer them and assist with the services that were required to get going. They will also collect information from those vessels, um, from firstly from a, a charging point of view, so they can be charged correctly, and secondly from a security point of view, so that we can feed information um, into the the police and into the, the border agencies, um, so that we ma ma maintain those links and make sure that our ports are, are secure. Now, this is uh, this is quite unusual. Um, around UK ports that we will we will assist a UK border force and we will pass those details on and offer them whatever assistance we can. So, um, it's not a legislative requirement. So some ports and harbours around the UK, um, and particularly some marinas, will not work with um, with with the border agents. Are not so willing to to share that information. But we we believe that to protect the local community um, and protect protects the harbours. So we're quite happy and we will regularly work with. With third-party agencies um, to to increase security around the area. So that leads me nicely into the second area, which is security itself. Uh, so we fall under the International Port and Facility Security Regulations, and that puts um, an onus on us to to protect um, our ports, um, our wharves, our pontoons, and such like. And it, it also means that when we get um, when we get visiting cruise vessels, which hopefully we'll have one later in uh, in this year. Um, we, we have the powers and we will close down areas of the port to ensure that we have a secure area for those passengers to come and go from the cruise vessel. So what that means is that we will secure the area, we'll, we'll ensure the, the entrance to that area is guarded, we will conduct uh, people searches, baggage searches, and we will count visitors in and out of that area. Anybody is, who is not um, on, on a list of, of passengers or crew for that vessel will not be allowed to enter that area. Um, and that is that is all managed uh, and overwatched by the Department for Transport, um, and they will inspect our security arrangements to check that we are providing that security barrier um, between the land um, and the vessel itself. The last thing we want is to be responsible for for, for somebody or something um, of a dangerous nature going through the port um, and then impacting uh, on a vessel that's visiting our town. So the, the third area to cover then is emergency response. Now, um, emergencies do happen, happen on, a, on a fairly regular basis uh, within, our, within Whitby Harbour. Thankfully, most of them are of a very minor scale, but our team on the ground uh, will initially respond to any emergency which occurs. And we will look after that incident and respond to it until the emergency services arrive, at which case we will pass the emergency over to the emergency services and we will act to support them um, and do what we what we can to, to exist, uh, to, to assist um, and act as the subject matter experts. There is one exception to that, and that's oil pollution. Now, with oil pollution, the, the coin is flipped um, and we continue to be responsible for and continue to, to direct the response to an oil, oil pollution incident. The emergency services will still be called. They will still assist us, um, but ultimately the responsibility for, for oil pollution, pollution lies with us uh, and as such our staff are trained both in, in incident response um, and as unseen commanders to deal with that sort of incident. Mm. Now one of the big areas um, that we deal with is conservancy um, and this anybody who's visited the town will have probably have seen our, our big yellow dredge at the sand's end and what she does is she, she dredges spoil from the navigation channel from the berths and then she takes it out to sea to, to uh, a disposal site where it's dropped uh, onto the seabed. Now, of course, dredging the harbour is a constant battle. Mother Nature constantly wants to bring the, the sand and the silt back into the harbour uh, and also wants to bring it down river um, fr from further inland. So we're fighting the battle on, on two fronts. So it is important that we maintain the, the, our dredging activities. And we do that throughout the year as the weather allows to make sure that we, we maintain the berths um, at a minimal safe level. Now, we have a duty to, to ma maintain the vessel so that it's reasonably fit for use. Now, that doesn't mean that we have a duty to, to dredge the harbour um, to allow super tankers to enter. What we have to do is to maintain it at a, at a reasonable level uh, for the vessels that, that currently use it. Now, if you've seen any old pictures of, of Whitby Harbour, 
you'll have noticed that um, a lot of the a lot of the harbour bed is, is dry and you'll see pictures of fishing vessels which are sat on the mud at low water now that's because dredging within within Whitby Harbour is a fairly modern um, occurrence and when I say fairly modern I'm talking about in the last sort of 50 years before that it would have just been left to the elements um, and seafarers would um, just as they do today would have worked the tide um, so that they came and went um, when there was enough water for them now having our own dredging and our own dredger system um, for a harbour of our size is, is quite unusual uh, most harbours in the UK uh, don't own their own dredger um, and they the impact of that is that they will probably bring somebody in um, probably every three or four years to, to do their dredging for them. Now, that that means that if the channel, uh, if their channels dredge uh, silt up within that time, um, they will just have to wait until the next cycle. So we're actually quite lucky um, in that if we do have a, a sudden surge, a sudden siltation event, we can target that and we can deal with that quite quickly. So we, we're blessed to have the, uh, the, the dredger. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, our, one of our bigger areas um, that the staff deal with is, is maintenance. And as I said, that's led by the harbour joiner. And we do as much of the maintenance as we can in-house. Um, but then if there's something we can't do or we need some assistance, we'll bring in outside contractors. And of course, the key area for us is, is safety. Um, everything we, we do is risk assessed. And we're looking at both the safety of our staff, the safety of our users, and then the safety of the community as a whole. Um, because the last thing we want is, is incidents happening uh, on our patch um, and that again comes back to people letting us know when they see something that they don't think is quite right so that we can investigate and rectify if it's needed so everybody um, who visits our areas is a part of the harbour team in one way or another so let, let's take a quick look um, to the future um, and I'll give you an idea of some of the exciting things that, that I find exciting that are coming to the port in the next few years. So the, the first one is the, the arrival of offshore wind into Whitby. Now, offshore wind has, has long been um, spoke about in Whitby. Um, and the reason for that is that a, a local company wanted to or wants to build an offshore maintenance operations base um, on Endeavour Wharf um, in the centre of Whitby. And that would be designed to, to run stores and crew um, from the town to, to wind farms off the coast. And that is mainly to do with the, the Doggerbank wind farm. Now, this has been floating around for some time, at least the last five years. And the reason it's been delayed is because central government um, has delayed the project at Doggerbank, um, awaiting to, to give final approval. And of course, there's no point building an operations and maintenance base for a wind farm that doesn't exist yet and it is not going to exist in the next few years. Now, I'm pleased to say that this is now back on the cards because earlier uh, during last year, um, government did give the approvals required to start work on the Doggerbank wind farm. And further down the coast in East Yorkshire, the, the main connections that will bring the electricity from the wind farm um, to shore have now been made and work is well underway. So that brings the, the prospect of an offshore maintenance base within Whitby back onto the cards. And that would be very exciting for the town bringing jobs um, and a new, new innovation. Now, the, the second one that I'm, I'm personally very excited about uh, is connected to the, the current town deals fund bid. Um, and one of the projects that has been submitted to central government there is to build a maritime hub um, on Endeavour Wharf, um, which would ultimately um, incorporate the, the offshore maintenance uh, base that I just mentioned. Uh, but primarily the maritime hub would, would make Whitby um, a center of maritime excellence. And it would offer first class modern training facilities um, to, to both bring people to the town um, to train for, for the maritime industries, but also to offer local people, and in particular local young people, um, the opportunity to, to access the maritime industry um, and to be trained up for, the, for what is a, a massively growing um, industry in the, in the blue sector. Now, it's not just aimed at people who are not already in the sector or don't have anything to do with it. The, set, the hub would also cover um, things for local firms where, where they have training needs. So again, it can be done locally rather than those people needing to go to surrounding areas uh, to pick up that training uh, to renew any training required. So th this will hopefully open new doors um, for the, in particular for the youth of Whitby. Um, and as I say, the, the government is very invested uh, in expanding the, the maritime industry and they've written a, a very thick 
um, paper called the Maritime 2050 document. And this lays out a strategy um, to bring us to the, the, the world's foremost maritime nation um, within the next sort of 20 years. So th this should offer great opportunities um, for the towns, bringing in new jobs, bringing in new training opportunities. Um, and we are very hopeful that, uh, that the town deal funding um, will allow us to, to bring this vision uh, to reality. The, the third project that's exciting that's picking up at the moment is the prospect of a lobster hatchery on the fish key at Whitby. Now, this is an opportunity for, for us as a town to give back to the marine environment, because of course, as a town, we've long relied on our fishing community. And our fishing community is very important to us, um, both going forward and maintaining the heritage and the history from that. It will also act as a catalyst for the regeneration of the fish market, um, making it look less tired than it does now. Um, and and it, it, it will give us the opportunity to support the fishing community going forward. Now, this is a project that's, that's one to watch. Um, it's one that's, that, that is a private venture um, that is, they are currently crowdfunding. Um, and they, they hope to move this forward, um, both to, to be able to um, grow lobsters, uh, baby lobsters, and then return them to the sea, and then to offer a facility for people to, to come and look around and to, to get uh, to get a, a view firsthand of what goes on in our, in our local marine environment. So very exciting developments coming in the next few years. So the, the vision of Whitby Harbour and my vision as, as uh, the new Borough Harbour Master is, is to make sure that Whitby is a modern port, but a modern port which cherishes its community um, and its heritage um, and leads us and, and sets us up um, for a prosperous future, both for, for us as a harbour um, and then for the, for the community in general. Now, I hope this has been useful. Um, I hope I haven't bored you for too long. Uh, and I, I really thank you for it, to your attention. Uh, if people do have questions, we're always happy to answer them. Um, that we're, you know, we, we like people to be interested in what we do. And we appreciate that a lot of people see us, they see, see what goes on, but they don't really understand what's going on uh, behind the scenes. So if you do have questions, uh, let us know and we'll be more than happy to help. Uh, thanks for your time and have a good day.